What's up Giants fans, how y'all doing? It's your boy No Name, back at it again with another video, and I just realized I forgot part of my introduction, is usually Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, and all of that, but it doesn't matter. Um, I, like, today, I mean, um, hmm, what is it that I want to talk about today? What I really want to talk about today, guys, is two things. Kind of a bit of a news update video similar to the one I did right before the draft. Uh, we're going to talk about jersey numbers. The rookies picked out their, jer their jersey numbers. Of course, they're not final, but this is what they picked out so far. And then after that, or maybe even before, we'll talk about how the opinion of Jan Daniel Jones have been, has been swaying in the media and whatnot. So, as you all know, I am not necessarily a big fan of the Daniel Jones pick, but I'm somebody that supported it after the fact initially i did not like it i was a bit angry i was very disappointed because uh, i thought the best player on the board was josh allen i thought that was our biggest need although just a couple hours after the draft you know i started thinking about it logically i started recalling tape that i had watched on jones personally i had jones ranked as my number three quarterback i'm i still kind of do of course this is all based off of what they did in college and how they performed in their situations at college I, I can try nor will I try to predict what they're going to be like in the NFL. But personally I had Jones as the number 3 quarterback and I thought that our biggest need was not going to be the quarterback position, I thought we could address it later. Of course you all know that same draft night I put out a video talking about the first round might have actually been good because Jones was a dude that the scouting team, the professional scouting team of the New York Giants and the general manager had looked at for years and years and they decided that this was the guy and I always believe in the philosophy if you like a quarterback within the first round take him with your first pick don't wait for him because he might be gone you never know what happens in the NFL but um there was there was a group like that like me but then the majority of the Giants fan and of course the majority of the media absolutely hated on the pick and they absolutely started trashing both Daniel Jones and Dave Elman calling for their heads and whatnot and I didn't really say anything on this. All I told you guys was, you know, just watch the tape before you make an opinion. And now, all of a sudden, as though it's an idea I never thought about before, it's kind of funny to me. I was checking out Good Morning Football the other day. Nate Burleson, he was somebody, he didn't exactly have an outrageous take on the pick, but he didn't like it. And he said, you know, I was looking at some tape. Of course, this is all paraphrasing. And I'm starting to like Daniel Jones in New York. A couple YouTubers that I followed, they were all like, you know, I looked at some tape and I'm starting to like Daniel Jones in New York. People across the NFL media, you know, I was looking at some tape. You notice the pattern here? It's as though everybody went out there with their opinion on this guy without doing any type of research or just, you know, even doing a Google search on him. It seems like they went with the mob mentality of it was a bad pick because either A, it's somebody they never heard of, or, or B, it was a quarterback that they didn't want and it, it just baffles me that there's actually professionals out there and then you know bigger youtubers than me who like operate this way i mean i don't know man i, I just think that listen this goes for life in general you know what i'm saying <laughs> advice from no name today new segment let me stop but um before you go especially in the sports world where it is hard to project how players progress and what could happen given injuries different situations and different uh, work ethic, work ethics, and all that. Um, just before you go, giving a play, uh, an opinion on a player, you know, just try and do at least a little bit of research on them. You know what I'm saying? Um, even if you're a casual fan, especially when it comes to the draft, and then you're calling for a general manager's head, just go and try to see what they saw. I'm not gonna tell you to go do what they did because they had a whole team around them to do the scouting and whatnot. But just go, you know, a little quick search before you make an opinion. And even if after that. You still don't like the dude that's fine because now i know that you're at least informed on him you're not following the mob mentality you know what i mean just just think a little bit for yourself well now with that out the way i just wanted to get that out of the way real quick because i didn't want to make a devote a whole video to it it was just something really quick we could move on to some more fun news um and that fun news of course came out a couple days ago but 
the New York Giants rookies that were drafted in the first round finally chose their jersey numbers. At least the jersey numbers for like training camp and preseason and whatnot because you, they could always change before the regular season starts and before they're actually signed to the team. As we know, uh, Victor Cruz, I can't remember exactly what his number was. I think it was either like 7 or 8 in preseason before he wore number 80 during the regular season. There's other examples that you could think of, but that's just obviously the most famous one. So right now, let's go down the list. I'll give my quick opinions on it because, you know, um, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like your jersey number is a big part of the player, at least a bigger part than people think because, I mean... When you want to be that type of player when people think of your number, you're the only name that comes to mind. For example, when I think of number 52, I think of that dude in Baltimore right there, Ray Lewis. You know what I'm saying? He played so hard. I mean, because this is also partly because, you know, in football, you don't really see people's faces. They're covered by helmets and whatnot. So the way that you identify them is by their jersey number. So, you know, when you think of 52, you think Ray Lewis. When you think of 56, of course, for me, I think of uh, Lawrence Taylor. When you think of 55, it's like Terrell Suggs. When you think of uh, 12, right now I think of Andrew Luck, but you know, some people think of Brady. When you think of 10, you think of Eli Manning, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes a jersey number really matters to a player and can really define define how they look in the, uh, you know, just by casual fans and whatnot. And I say that because there are some <laughs> ugly jersey numbers out there. Like, for example, I don't like a running back that has a number in the 40s. Like Alvin Kamara, he has 41 as his number. I mean, he rocks it, but on anybody else, I don't know. Like, I think 41 is more of a cornerback number. I mean, like, there's just some numbers that are ugly. And I like the first one here, Daniel Jones, he chose number eight. I really hope that isn't his final number because I don't know, man. It just looks, it doesn't feel like it fits him. I would really prefer if he does, you know, take 17 away from Lawletta because. I mean, you take Jones with six, Lawletta is at this point either going to be off the team or going to be. A career backup for the Giants, you know what I'm saying? You, he could uh, he could totally just take his number from him, or you could go with some like 15 or I don't want him to go with 10 for obvious reasons. I, I think 10 would be retired after Eli finally retires, or even then I wouldn't take 10 just because I mean that there's already a number 10 for the Giants that everybody knows it as. Everybody knows him as, as Eli. He could even go with 13. There's quarterbacks out there with number 13 and all that, you know, replace Beckham. Or at least replace his number. I don't know. I just feel like 8. There's only a couple good single-digit um, numbers for quarterbacks out there. The ones that come to mind are 1 and 7. And I'm pretty sure for the Giants, 7 is retired. So next, uh, Dexter Lawrence, he chose 97. I got no problem with it. I think numbers in the 90s are like just what I think about when I think of defensive linemen. You know, 91, Justin Tuck. 90, JPP. Um, even the 70s, OC was 72. But in terms of tackles, I got no problem with it. Snacks was a 98, if I'm not sh mistaken. He could have taken 98. I would have had no problem with it. DeAndre Baker, 35. I would have really liked if he had his college number, number 18. But I don't really see that many cornerbacks in the league either way with uh, numbers in the teens. And I'm pretty sure one of our receivers has 18. Um, it used to be Roger Lewis, but he's no longer on the team. I can't exactly remember who has 18 on the team anymore, but doesn't matter. I mean, 35 for corners. I like numbers in the 20s and 30s. This is okay. Then O'Shane Zimenez, he got um the X-Men. He took 53, and I was really surprised by this because um I really thought he would have won something in the 90s, not in the 50s. Even though he is an outside linebacker, like we got Lorenzo Carter's uh, 59. 53, in terms of Giants players, there was obvious, obviously Harry Carson back in the days with uh, LT in the 80s and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know why he didn't go with like a 55 or a 52 or something, you know? Thinking back to Terrell Suggs and um, Ray Lewis, obviously it's different positions, but I don't know. I feel like linebacker numbers in, in the 50s would be that. Maybe he'll rock 53 or maybe he'll t change my mind. I don't know. I was actually thinking he'd probably go for like 72, like OC or 91. I would have absolutely loved that. You know, it's just, it's just like a Giants number. Then next, Julian Love, cornerback, he took 37. Similar to Baker. Um, I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, I mean, my corners, I like him in the 20s and 30s. I, I, I don't know, something about 37 just seems kind of ugly to me. You guys could judge me all you want. I mean, 
But I don't know, something about 37. Why not go for like 27 or something? Is there anybody on our team with a number 27? Not sure about that, but I'd, I'd like him to have 41. I'm pretty sure Sam Beal is rocking 41 right now, though, but I would have liked Julian Love to rock 41. Reminds me of, obviously, DRC, and it's just a really good cornerback number. Then our linebacker that we picked up, Ryan Connolly, 57. I mean, I don't know why. I just think that suits him. It's a pretty good middle linebacker, middle linebacker number, and for some reason, this guy, he kind of reminds me of, um, like, a Chase Blackburn, even though Blackburn didn't have 57, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, I mean, Ryan Connolly don't really mind it. 57 just seems like it fits him. Darius Slayton, 86. Now, I, I don't know. I've, I, I have, like, a funny feeling with wide receiver numbers now. I don't know if you, you guys have noticed. I just pick up on these little weird things in the NFL. But recently, it shifted from numbers in the 80s, like the past, like, say, six, five years, to numbers in the teens. Like, a lot of wide receivers now, you rarely see them rocking any numbers in the 80s. It's more so with, like, settle for tight ends. And I actually think Darius is not going to keep this number. I'm pretty sure we're probably going to give 86 to um, CJ Conrad if he makes it onto the team. Um, the only wide receiver that wears the number in the 80s for us um, is uh, Russell Shepard and Sterling Shepard, the two Shepherds. And Sterling Shepard basically made it into his own, but I don't know. I feel like Slayton might be better as like a number 15 or something. I, I just have a feeling he's not going to keep 86. I mean, if he does, it would just look weird for me because... I just I just look at that as like a tight end number. I don't know. It's just me, guys. Uh, Corey Ballantyne, he got number 25. I absolutely love it. I, I like the low 20s and the mid 20s for cornerbacks. Not much there. George Asafo with J. If I'm not pronouncing his name right, you guys should let me know. But um, I'm just going off the pronunciation that that the website has in the parentheses. Uh, he goes with number 78. I like that. Like I like a right tackle or just a tackle in general who has a number in the 70s. Um, the 60s. I don't know, it just does, it, it kind of reminds me of like backups, like I'm pretty sure Chad Wheeler right now is a 64 or something, or a 63, but yeah, I, I like the 70s, thank god it's not a 74 or a 76, I want nothing to do, I want nothing to do with Eric Flowers, even if it is just his number, and Chris Slayton has 99, this one actually surprised me, isn't there, I, I like, I'm 99% sure, how funny, <laughs> That there's somebody on our team with the number 99. Um, isn't it Mario Edwards Jr.? I'm just going off the top of my head here. It was either Mario Edwards Jr. or Avery Moss. They, they were wearing 99. I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind it for Slayton. Like, once again, you already know my opinion on him in general. Uh, nothing against the player. I just thought that we didn't need to pick up another defensive lineman anyway. So, I mean, it's not to say I don't really care about what he chooses but it affects me much less than everybody else um he could very well still make the team who knows uh who knows who knows who knows what goes down in training camp but yeah guys there's uh my little weird take and breakdown on the uh jersey numbers for our new rookies uh, i'll just go back down the list real quick quarterback daniel jones is number eight defensive tackle dexter lawrence is 97 cornerback cornerback deandre baker is 35 Edge, O'Shane Zimenez is 53. Cornerback, Julian Love is 37. Linebacker, Ryan Connolly is 57. Wide receiver, Darius Slayton is 86. Cornerback, Corey Ballantyne is 25. Offensive tackle, George Asafo with J is 78. Defensive line, Chris Slayton is 99. That's about it. Just a quick update video for you guys. I want to get something up on the channel for Sunday. Um... If anything else happens, obviously, I'll get it up. That's it for me. You're...